In this presentation, we will continue on looking at the company preferences, this time focusing in on the checking preferences, although we will also take a quick look at the bills and the calendar preferences within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to go back into the preferences by going to the Edit drop down up top, and we're going to go back down to our preferences. Edit and then preferences. We did the accounting last time. We're going to be moving down from accounting. We'll be stopping at the checking uh, item here. So if we go to the next one, we're going to say, all right, the bills. Bills has two tabs. We have the My Preferences and we have the Company Preferences. Nothing in My Preferences. Therefore, we go to the Company Preferences. The default settings are those that we will keep here. And those are the bills are due 10 days uh, after receipt. So we, when we enter a bill into the system and when we're considering the bills, we're considering these items that will then pay with a check with the pay bills items typically. So when we enter them into the system, we typically have the default saying they're going to be due within 10 days after the receipt. Then it'll say that they're basically past due so we can track that information. Warn about duplicate bill numbers from the same vendor. So if we have duplicate bill numbers, it will give us a warning on that. We have the automatically use credits. We're going to keep the default here. Automatically use discounts. If you want to set that up, you can select that item. And then uh, default for the discounts. We're going to keep the default setting, not having either of them. Then we're going to go to the calendar. Within the calendar preferences, nothing's in the My Preferences tab. If we, if we go to the, I'm sorry, nothing's in the Company Preferences tab. Then if we go to the My Preferences tab, we have the calendar. I'm going to keep the default settings here. We have the calendar view. Remember the last view. So the last time we were in there, remember that view. Or you can say the default view being the view daily, weekly, monthly. We have the re weekly view showing uh, five, seven days. You could choose it to fix at the five for a workday week or seven for uh, you know the full week. And then we can show all transactions. I'm going to keep the default with the all transactions. The upcoming past due settings. We can display in the show, show only if data exists or remember last. And then the upcoming date show seven days. And then the past due date, we're going to show 60 days that are going to be past due. So upcoming seven days. And if it's past due, we've got the 60 days. Next, we're going to go to the checking. So the checking in the preferences up top. Once again, we have two tabs. First tab, my preferences. Within the My Preferences, we're basically going to be check taking a look at the major checking account. Now, when we set up the chart of accounts as it was set up for us by the default settings by picking the industry we are in when creating Get Great Guitars file, it didn't set up a checking account. We don't have one yet. Therefore, some of these settings are going to be trying to default to a checking account we have not set up. Once we set it up, considering it is the only checking account we have, these default settings then will apply to it. So in other words, if we have this open the right checks, which checking account are you going to basically be using it from? Well, we don't have any checking accounts right now, but if you only have one checking account, obviously that will typically be the default. Now, if you have more than one checking account, that's when it becomes confusing and you're going to want to basically, you know, make sure the system when you open something up that you would think would go to a checking account, such as write checks, <laughs> it'll go to the default checking account. If you have, for example, a payroll account, and another checking account or if you have other type of investments that are set up for as a cash type of account as opposed to some other type of account we'll take a look at those accounts uh, and how and the listing of the accounts and how they're set up in more detail just note that typically and in this problem we're gonna have one checking account therefore anytime it's asking which account to go to it'll be the checking account so once we set the checking account up in other words all these will be checked off be going to that one checking account so open the bills, open the pay, sales tax, open and make deposits, all would be going to, of course, our checking account. Then I'm going to go to the company preferences up top. We have, and we're going to be basically keeping the default settings here. So let's just go through them and review them. We have the print account numbers on the voucher. We're going to keep the default setting as unchecked. We're going to say change check date when no clear checks is uh, printed. Keep the default setting as unchecked. Start with payee field on the check. Now, if you go into the checks and you feel that the payee field is easier to start with as opposed to the date. So, and usually it'll start at the upper last left most field when you enter data. 
if you always write checks on the day that you are at, you may, it made the date may default to what you need it to be anyways, and you don't need it to start there. So that could be something that you can kind of uh, test out and see if it improves your data input. We're going to keep the default setting as no. It's probably best to do that with this problem because we're going to have to change the date all the time considering we're not entering data in real time, but we'll have to be entering data at some other date than the current date. Uh, so then we have to warn about duplicate check numbers. Notice that check numbers are something that if we were to print out of the system or if we were to hand write the checks and then just enter them into the system as being written, the check numbers are something that are not part of the system. They should be pre-numbered checks, in other words. So it's really important or it's very useful. It's a big internal control safeguarding against your cache to have a warning of du duplicate check numbers and be able to use the, the fact that they're in a numbered sequence. So that's a good uh, default setting to have typically. Uh, autofill payee account number in the check memo. Again, this is a, a nice feature to have, to have it autofill there. We'll keep that as the default. Then it says select the account uh, to use, open the create checks. Obviously that would be our one checking account once again. So we would check that off and pick the one checking account, which we have not yet set up yet. Once we set up the one checking account, it will be going there. And then we have the open the payroll liabilities, same thing. Then we have the view and enter uh, downloaded transactions using express mode. This was new in 2014, where we create rules automatically. And this will basically do things like auto populate, help us to auto populate the checks, remember the checks from the prior period or the prior check that we wrote so that it'll start to auto populate. It could help us to memorize the account that we put in last time so that we have an, an idea of what happened last time. Very useful features. I would recommend putting those in place. So we're going to cre create rules automatically uh, or always ask before creating uh, a rule. So create rules automatically, always ask before creating a rule. We're going to have them both checked. And that's as far as we'll get this time. We'll continue on taking a look at these preferences next time.